All right, so now we're gonna compute a square root, but we'll do it from actual number because it'll be much easier than doing it with algebra. Okay, so for example, here's my example. Net z equal minus five plus two i. Okay, so here's my example. Um, this theory is what I needed to establish stuff up here. Okay. I'm going to say now, therefore, the square root of z, as I just established, if z is a complex number, the square root of z must also be a complex number. Okay, so I'm going to write it like this: x plus i y. I don't know what x is. I don't know what y is. But I know there's going to be a real part and an imaginary part. Okay, now just like I did up here with my complex root that I didn't know, right? I'm going to square both sides because then I know what z is, right? So if I square both sides, I get this. Do you agree with that? Is that okay? It's square. Oh, sorry. That's just z. Sorry, that's better. Okay. So I square the left hand side, the square root disappeared. I square the right hand side, so I just have that. Now I know what z is in this particular case. I've got a value for it, so I'll just substitute that in. Now on the right hand side, I'm just multiplying a complex number by itself. Right? This is x plus i y times x plus i y. That's fine. This is just like a normal binomial, yeah? So when I expand this, what do I get? x squared plus 2 i x y plus I squared y squared. Now you might just go straight to that minus sign if you like. As I've mentioned before, because we're still fairly early, I'm going to write I squared, and I don't want to confuse the sign. Okay. So I've got this. Uh, let's just rearrange just ever so slightly to make it clear what the real part is and what the imaginary part is. Okay. So I've got x squared, and this is real. This I squared y squared is real, right? It's minus y squared. Do you agree with that? Yes. That's the real component, the real part. And then what I'm left with is I'll stick that i out the front to make very obvious that this is imaginary. And I'm left with 2xy. You okay with that? Yeah. Now, just to make it clearer, I'm going to rewrite z over here on the left-hand side. And now you can see, just like we've done so many times in quadratic theory, in trig when we did auxiliary angle, right? Can you see on the left-hand side, there's a real part. And on the right hand side, there's a real part. Yes? On the left hand side, there's an imaginary part. And on the right hand side, there's an imaginary part. So by comparison of coefficients, I know that the blue part and the blue part must be the same. Because remember, real and imaginary cannot mix. They're two different things. Okay? Question? Um, when you stated root z is x plus i, y, don't you have to state that x and y are real? Yes, yes I should. Thank you for catching that. Uh, I'll do it in this color. Which I'm glad you mentioned because it will become crucial to us shortly. Okay? Great pickup. Alright, now, therefore I can say I can equate the real and imaginary components. In fact, I'm even going to say that. Okay? Equating real and imaginary parts. This is analogous to when I compared coefficients, like how many sine x's do I have on this side and this side? How many cos x's do I have on this side and this side? I'm equating, I'm comparing those two. Out of this, I'm just going to go straight up to, the, um, up to this side of the wall because I'm going to start working with these. I see that x squared minus y squared equals negative 5. And 2xy equals 12. You comfortable with that? See what I've done? It's a simple comparison of those coefficient parts. Now what I've got here is two simultaneous equations. And I have two variables, namely x and y. Okay? In some senses, you can work this out completely yourself. You don't need my help now. Like this is just going to be, it's going to end up as a quadratic. Okay? But being this our first time, let's walk through it together. Okay? Simultaneous equations, you've got two broad strategies for solving simultaneous equations. One starts with an S, one starts with an E. Do you remember what they are? Substitution, Substitution and elimination. elimination. Okay. Which do you think will be more helpful in this context? Substitution. Substitution is going to be the only option, really, because there's nothing in common, really, that will properly eliminate. You see that? It's not like I have a Y and a 2Y here. There's nothing I can multiply by in terms of a constant that will get me out of here. So I need to substitute. You can see it's going to be much easier to work with this guy. right? So I'm going to say Y equals 12 on 2X. 
Happy with that? Which is 6 on x? So now I have something I can substitute out. Let's go straight back to equation 1. And I'm going to write x squared. Take away what? 6 over x squared. Don't forget to square 36 over x squared. Yeah, because I know what y is. And so I'm putting in y squared. You might have put in 6 over x all squared. That's also fine. Okay? That's equal to negative 5. Is this a quadratic? Yes. 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 No, it's a quadratic. Yes. Now, as you'll see in a few seconds, this is not a quadratic. It is a quadratic. But that doesn't mean I can't still handle it as a quadratic. Watch. Let's multiply through. I get this. Whoops. I multiplied through by x. Right? And by the way, the reason sorry, x squared. And the reason why I can do that is because x squared is not zero. How do I know that? I'll let you have a think about it as to why. Um, x squared is not zero. How do I know that? The real answer, the proper because formal answer for why um, will come a bit later. Okay? Is it because um, on x squared is on the bottom, therefore it can't be zero? So there's this, yeah. right? But in a sense, I did that. Oh. The question didn't do that, I did that, right? But you're pretty close. Does anyone see? Look, just look up here. Just look up here. If x was 0, there's no solution to this, right? It can't work. There's, there's no value you can put in y that will make this satisfied. Okay? So that's how I know it's not an answer. OK, now this is not a quadratic. It's a quartic. But that doesn't matter if I just put that x squared term over here. It's fine. I can work with it just like I would work with a quadratic because it's an equation I can reduce to a quadratic. Okay. You don't even really need to know that. If I imagine this was u squared and this was u, u squared plus 5, u minus 36. This is even easy to factorize. What's the factorization? Uh, x squared plus 9 multiplied all by x squared minus x. Perfect. Oh, okay. you get the same essentially if you do it with y. Yes, exactly, you would. Well, and, and you shouldn't be surprised at that because if I swap, like, y is equal to 6 on x, but x is equal to 6 on y. Oh, and also it's x squared. Yeah, you see, you see, this, it's, well, this is what we call symmetrical, right? So it's, you're going to end up with the same thing. Okay, now, as Vincent pointed out, right, x and y are real. x and y are real. So therefore, this part here, like, I'm like, cool, I'm in the complex world. I can solve this, but we don't want to. We only want to think about, for x, the real numbers, right? So I would say, no real solution. Not to that part. Oh, right? Why? For x squared plus 9, what real number can you put in there to make a truth? Because x and y are the coefficients of this oh, okay. here, and the, the coefficients are real. The whole number is complex, but the coefficients are real. Okay? Yeah, okay. Now, no real solution there. But I do get two solutions out of this guy, right? What are my answers for x? Plus or minus, Plus or minus 2. You okay with that? Okay, now let's consider these one at a time. I'll go x equals plus 2 or x equals minus 2. If x is positive 2, therefore y is equal to? 3. 3. If x is negative 2, then y is equal to? Negative 3. Okay, so now out of these two lines, one and two, I have two complex numbers, right? You see that's each one is a, is a complex number. So I've got here two plus three i, that's one solution. And then here I've got minus two minus three i. Yay. Those are the square roots of this number here. Okay. Now you'll notice there are two. There are two square roots. Well, because they usually are though. Ah, now, they usually are, but you've got to be careful, right? When I say, what's the square root of 25, right? What's the square root of 25? I mean it's 5. And I don't mean it's minus 5. Okay. Now hold on a second. Why, when I'm over in this land, do I say there's one solution? But here, when I'm in this land, I say, you know what? There are two solutions. Why am I okay with two solutions here, but I restrict it here? Because you can do the square root of negative 
I'll just tease an answer for you by showing you a bit of arithmetic. Okay, I'm just going to tease an answer for you. The reason why I say this is because I can say this. Yeah, that's what I meant. You can do like. You okay with that? Yeah. You agree with that, right? Square root of 5 to square root of 5 to square root of 25. Yes? But if I were to say, if I were to with, you know, allow within my definition of the square root of 25, if I were to permit this, then I would be able to say this. And but the fact is, I cannot. I can't. Do you see why? Because underneath the surface, you can find some numbers. What's going on here? What's going on here? I've got the square root of 5, using our language now, which is more powerful, that's the square root of 5i, right? Times the square root of 5i. Do you agree with that? But I know what this is equal to. There's an i squared there, which is, that's not root 25, that's minus root 25. Do you see that? Okay. So you see, when I say this equals this, the reason why is because I can't play with these guys, right? I, have, I haven't developed the mathematics to deal with the complex numbers that arise from letting in this guy and saying this. I can't. But now that I'm in the complex world, right, these are just fine. Like, I can deal with either of these, you know, and no rules will be broken, unlike here, right, because I'm safely in the complex world. And you can test it out. You can go ahead. You can do 2 plus 3i. Let's quickly square it, shall we? Help me out. 4 plus 4. Sorry, 4 plus. Plus 12i. Plus. 9i squared. 9i squared. Uh, that's minus 9. Minus 5 plus 12i. You don't even really need to compute the other one, right? It's kind of obvious why this has to equal the same. Just a second. We get there. Why is it obvious? Because I can take out a factor of minus 1 here, can't I? So this is, big bracket, minus 2 plus 3i all squared. But that means there's a minus 1 times minus 1, which is just 2 plus 3i squared, which I just calculated. right? So you can see, in fact, in some senses, once I get this, I don't really need to worry about this guy. It's just kind of implied. Right? 